Okay, welcome to the video, Sig Guy here. This is going to be an installation video for the Armory Craft P365 four piece Ultimate Master Spring tuning kit. In this kit, we got four different springs. We got a reduced weight striker spring, a reduced weight striker safety spring, a reduced weight sear spring, and a positive reset trigger return spring. I'm going to show you how to disassemble your 365, install all these springs. So, with that, let's get started. Before we get started, I just want to go over what's included in our spring kit and go over a tool kit that can make this job a lot easier. In the spring kit, we got four springs, like I said. We have the reduced weight striker spring. This is minus 20% from the original. We have a reduced weight striker safety spring. Which is minus 25% from the OEM spring. We have a reduced weight sear spring which is minus 25 percent as well from the oem spring and we have a positive reset trigger return spring which is plus 10 percent and that's going to help with that mushy reset um, from the 365. so most kits don't include this spring armory craft is including this spring in this kit for less than other spring kits uh, from competitors so uh, the tool kit, this is the 365 disassembly and reassembly kit. I sell it on my website, sigguy.com. This has got three different tools in it that help make this job a lot easier. Um, you'll see throughout the video how each tool is used. So if you're interested in purchasing this, you can also get that on sigguy.com. So let's start taking this apart and installing the Armory Craft Ultimate Master Spring Tuning Kit for the P365. The first step when working on any firearm is make sure we're working on a clear and safe firearm. So if you've got a magazine installed, we're going to remove our magazine. Lock our slide to the rear. We're going to physically and visually check to make sure there's no round in the chamber, no magazine. Check our breech face, look away, do the same thing again. Chamber, magazine, breech face. We are working on a clear and safe firearm. First, I'm going to perform a field strip. So I'm going to rotate my takedown lever with my slide uh, locked to the rear. We're going to release our slide and remove it. Two of the springs are here, and the other two springs in the kit are in here. So I'm going to start with the lower first. It's the more difficult part to start with. So First, we're going to use our first tool in our toolkit to remove our receiver pin right here in the back. That just pushes out to the side. Okay, and we'll set that aside. And then we're going to lift up on our FCU from the rear and pull it straight up and out just like that. Once I have the FCU removed, my first step is going to be to remove this trigger return spring right here. Basically, goes through the hole on this end and it catches on a ledge on this side here. So all I need to do is grab my 45 degree pick that's in my toolkit. I'm going to grab onto this end right here. I'm going to pull it towards me so it'll get this leg right out of that hole and release it. Just like that. And we'll let that fall right out. Now that my trigger return spring is removed, my trigger bar is just kind of flopping around so I'm going to move that out of the way. And I'm just going to rotate it and let that disconnector fall right out. With the disconnector removed, I can see the two holes in this side. One is for our safety lever pivot pin. And the top one here is for our sear pivot pin. We're going to use our punch in our kit. And we're going to remove this smaller pin, the one on the bottom. This pin size here is perfectly sized for that hole. We're going to push that pin out. And the reason why we're doing that is because the end of the pin on the other side is capturing our takedown safety bar right here okay so now that that pin is removed we're going to pull out this pin and then we're going to catch our safety lever right here the safety lever is the one that flops up and down usually when you're putting your slide back on okay so i'm going to remove my tool and just let that safety lever fall right out now that we have our safety lever pivot pin removed, we can remove our takedown safety lever if it hasn't fallen out already. We can rotate our takedown lever to about the seven o'clock position and slide that out as well. Although it's not completely necessary, I'm gonna remove my trigger bar and my trigger just to make things a little easier, less things flopping around here. We have a punch in our kit. 
that is made perfectly for the pivot pin right here. I'm just going to insert that into the hole and just push that pin right out the other side. We'll remove our punch. That'll give us a lot more movement in our trigger. We're going to push our trigger all the way to the back. We're going to pick up on our trigger bar and we're going to release it from the trigger just like that. Next, we'll just grab onto our trigger, remove it from our FCU. Sometimes these are a pain in the butt to get out of there. Um, not often does it come right out like that. So sometimes you got to wiggle it around and finagle it and it'll release just like that. Okay. So we're going to set that aside and then there's really nothing else left in here except our slide catch, our slide stop. We're not going to remove that at all. Uh, but now there's nothing hanging off of this thing and it makes removing our sear and sear spring much easier. Lastly, we'll remove our sear and our sear spring. And to do that, we're just going to use our punch and our tool kit. The larger of the two holes on the side here, we're going to use our tool kit to push out our pin. We'll set that aside. We'll remove our tool, flip this upside down. And there is our sear and our sear spring. All right, before we start putting this all back together, this is a perfect time to clean this thing inside and out. Um, get all that carbon buildup out of there, all that dust and dirt and grime, um, pocket lint, all kinds of stuff like that. That way when we reassemble it and lube it, um, it's back in perfect working condition. So I want to go over the sear cavity here really quick before we put this back together. It's a lot easier to understand what's going on if you um, understand what it looks like in there. So let me zoom in a little bit so we can get a better look at this. Okay. So two things going on here. First of all, we have this shelf right here, okay? Right on the side, on this side here. When we put our sear spring in later on, we're gonna use this punch to come in through this hole, just like that, okay? And the way this punch is tapered, it's gonna move that spring up and set it right on this shelf, okay? That way it's not gonna be in the, this hole here where a pin goes through, okay? When that spring's hanging down in this hole, it's very difficult to get the pin and, you know, get it by the spring. So there's a really easy way to do this, and I'll show you later on. Second of all, you got this little cavity down in the bottom here, okay? When your sear and sear spring go in, they go in a certain way. There's a little window down here, okay? So basically that little cavity, you can see my punch hanging down in the bottom there. For the sear, we want our sear to be showing in that window down bottom, right here. We want our sear to be just like that, the bottom leg of our sear. You want to be able to see it towards the front of that cavity. That way it's in the right position. If it's way over here or in this window where the pin goes, um, it's not in the right position. It needs to be sitting back just like this, okay? The opposite is true with our sear spring when we first put it in. You want to see that sear spring through the bottom hole the leg of it just like that. If you can't see the sear spring, well then your sear spring is tilted like this, which brings that leg towards the back, and that leg is back behind this hole, okay? We need it to be showing through the hole, just like that. That'll make a lot more sense as we're putting this together, okay? Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install my sear. So this is the front of my pistol, facing that way. This is the way my sear is going to go in, just like that. And this is the way my sear spring is going to go in, just like that. You'll see a little notch. This sear spring is going to lay right on top of this sear, okay? You'll see the little foot on my sear spring here. That little foot goes into the little notch right underneath your sear right there. Your sear might look a little bit different. There's been a bunch of different revisions for these sears over time. Um, but the installation is the process is the same no matter which one you have in there so there's two different ways there's probably many different ways you can do this but two most common ways people will take grease and put a blob of it right on the side of their sear and then they'll kind of glue their sear spring right to the sear just like that and then they'll grab it as an assembly and drop it down inside the fcu so you can notice the sear spring how it the leg is captured underneath my sear that's the way it needs to go inside the pistol, okay? So what happens a lot of times, like I was explaining before with the windows and stuff, if you don't see your spring 
in that little hole that the pin's going to go through, that means your spring is more or less in this type of position. Okay, the bottom of it is not up underneath the sear. The front of it is too far forward. You can't see it through that hole, which is like relatively right, right here. Okay, so that's why you got to make sure that it's rotated properly. And you can see that leg through the hole in the FCU. That means that it's up underneath your sear. Now this might flop around and stuff while you're trying to get the pin all lined up. That's fine. As long as ultimately the sear is in the right position and the spring is in the right position. Okay. So the way I like to do it is I'll drop one piece in at a time. So I'm going to take my sear. I'm going to turn around backwards here really quick. Just drop it in the side just like that. And a lot of times this works easier if you are working on its side. Just kind of slide the pieces in. So, as you can see, the sear is in. I just got to capture it with my pen. And the leg of it, you can see it through the window here towards the front. If you can't see that, the leg of that in this window, that means it's over here. It's angled like this, okay, which means it's not down inside that cavity. So you got to pick it up, rotate it, drop it back down. Until you see that leg anywhere inside that window. Okay. So now that that's in there, next I'll put my sear spring in. I'm going to remove my tool, but the sear spring is going to go right in this side. Okay. There's a little gap in there. And like I said, you when you put that sear spring in, you want to be able to see the leg right through this hole. The way that I put my sear spring in is you don't forget we got the little, little hook on the end of it. Well, it's not going to slide straight in through the side here. I got to rotate it 90 degrees, slide it inside that gap, rotate it back, and then drop it down inside. Okay? So I'll remove this pin. I'm going to put that in, rotate it around, drop it down. Just like that. So it's on the side of my shear, and now I'll align everything properly. So now I'm going to tip it on its side. I'm just going to kind of look at, I'm going to look through here. I can see the bottom of my sear, and I don't see my sear spring pushing up against it. So I'm going to use my tool and fit that into the proper place. And now, as you can see, I can see my sear spring, the leg of it through the hole there. i got to line up my center hole here. But I want to see that wire from my sear spring through this hole. Okay? If I can't see it through the hole... That means it's too far back, which means your spring is rotated like this, okay, which brings that bottom leg back. So you need to lift the whole thing back up, rotate it around, and drop it back down in there, okay? So now that I have that somewhat lined up, I'm going to use my punches to act like a slave pin to hold everything right where it needs to be. So this is absolutely perfect. Okay, I can see the leg of my sear through the window here. See it? And I can see my sear spring in the hole here. Everything is perfectly lined up. So I'm going to take my, my sear pivot pin, which is this really short one. And it's got like a, looks like a nail head on one end. Okay, so it only goes in one way. It's going to go in through this side here. That's why I put my punch in through the bottom. So I can use this to push my punch out. My punch will act like a slave pin. Okay. So we'll get this started just like this. So just take your time with this. There's no, not a race. And I'm going to push my finger. Push this pin out. Make sure that's all the way in there. And then we're going to double check things again to make sure... You can see my spring in the hole and my sear leg right here in the window.
So that is the most difficult part of this whole process. Okay, once you've done that, it's a cakewalk after that. So now, we need to address the spring that's in the hole. And this is what I talked about when I was showing you inside the cavity here. We're going to use this punch to slide through that hole. It's going to move that spring up, and it's going to hopefully pop it over onto that shelf. That way you won't even see the spring in the hole, and we'll be able to get our pin through there no problem. Now, this doesn't work on every single 365, okay? It works on the vast majority of them, okay? So if this doesn't work, don't worry about it. You can still get that pin through there. You just kind of kind of come in through the backside with a pin or a punch, move that spring out of the way, and then slide your pin by it. You can remove your punch and then continue with the installation, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my punch. I'm going to put it in on the underside of that spring, okay? So I'm going to kind of come in here at an angle. Move that spring out of the way. Now we're just going to push this in and twist it, push it as hard as you can, pull it out, and voila, the spring is out of the hole. And that really is the magic of having the proper tools to do a job. It takes way less time if you've got the right tools. Um, you're not getting frustrated and aggravated um, trying to complete the task. So now that we have that all set, we are good to go. Uh, what we're going to do next is I'm going to take my safety lever pivot pin which is this guy right here. I'm going to start inserting it in that same hole. Now, again, if you took pictures and videos and all that stuff, it shows you the proper way things go in because um, this is also, and yours might look a little different. It might be silver, it might be black, it might be shaped a little bit different. Uh, so it goes through rolling changes throughout time. When they find something and they can improve on it, they incorporate it, they don't necessarily let everybody know. Um, so this pin, what it does is it holds our safety, or excuse me, our sear pivot pin, and it holds our takedown safety lever. Okay, so you gotta make sure it's properly positioned uh, to do such. If you have it upside down, you can push it in, and it all, all acts like it works fine and everything, but then you can't put this into your grip module because that's not far enough in, okay? Also, if this does not go far enough in, make sure that your sear pivot pin right here is all the way in. Sometimes that doesn't go all the way in. So when you go to press this in, it doesn't go all the way in. Okay, so make sure that's all the way in. This is, I call it like a shark fin. So it looks like a little shark fin up top here. That needs to be pointing up. And that will capture my sear pivot pin. So before we go any further on this stuff here, we need to make sure we put our trigger and trigger bar in first. So we're going to do that next. We'll install our trigger. Um, again, if you're going to lubricate and all this stuff, I'm not going to lubricate mine because I'm basically going to take this apart again. Um, you want to put lubrication on all your pivot points, um, basically where your trigger goes through your trigger bar, where your trigger pivot pin is. Any metal-on-metal -metal contact, you want to put a light coat of oil or grease or whatever you prefer to use. Okay. So we'll install our trigger just like that. And then before we put our trigger pivot pin in, we need to put our trigger bar in. So the hole in our trigger bar goes on the side here, up underneath the trigger. And we need to kind of move things around until we figure, feel that trigger bar fit onto the pin on our trigger. So if it captures the pin, you be able to move the trigger just like that. Okay, and then we can just kind of plop that down right on the side for now. Then we'll take our trigger pivot pin. This goes in through the other side. We'll slide that in through the hole. Kind of wiggle our trigger around and push that in. Sometimes it'll stay by itself. Sometimes it's a really loose fit. As soon as you turn it over this way, it falls out. Now that my trigger's in, I'm going to rotate it back to the side here. We're going to install our takedown lever that goes in about the 7 o'clock position. And then we'll rotate it up. Now a couple things here. This is a perfect example right here. So if I rotate it on its side and I look straight down from the top, I can see my takedown lever is quite a bit further out than my slide catch. Okay. These need to be perfectly even. That way I know my takedown is all the way in. Okay. So I'm going to rotate it 
back to about the seven o'clock, push it in a little bit, and then rotate it back up. Now you can see it is perfectly even with my slide catch. Okay, the number one email I get when people replace their triggers is it doesn't work properly afterwards and they don't know why. Most times it's because they didn't put their takedown lever all the way in properly. That interacts with our trigger. See the other side? Okay, so that's in properly and that has a notch on the bottom here. Okay, that notch, our takedown safety lever goes in. The hooked end right here goes in that little notch and then this other end here goes down inside underneath our pin now there's a little ledge here a little bump that bumps out our this bar here needs to go above that okay you just sit on top of it just like that so it just takes a little bit of finagling to get everything to line up Just kind of play around with it until everything falls right into place. You can see it's captured underneath here. It's above the little shelf. It's flush with the side. It's down underneath my safety lever pivot pin here. So now that I have that in position, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push in my pivot pin here. I'm going to rotate it and push it in until I just barely see it starting to come through the window here. This is where our safety lever goes, so we can't have that pin too far in because our safety lever won't fit in there. So I'm going to push it in until I just barely see the head of it, and I'm going to pull it out just a little bit. Just like that. Make sure we're in proper orientation. I'm going to hold that with my finger. I'm going to flip it over to this side. I'm going to pull my trigger bar. You ain't got to worry about your trigger bar falling out. It's not going to fall out. I'm going to get that out of the way so I can see these holes here. Okay. I'm going to take my safety lever, which goes in just like that. The long leg facing down, the other one facing forward. This is the back of the pistol. I'm going to slide it into that slot. See that slot right there? I'm going to slide it in as I'm watching through the holes there. See it moving around inside the holes. I'm going to line up this hole in my safety lever with the bottom hole in the FCU. Okay. I'm going to use my pick to get that where it needs to be. So it's roughly centered, it's a little off center, but right now I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna push my pivot pin up in. It's gonna push itself against the safety lever, keep it from flopping around so much. And I'll just keep pressure on that with my finger as I use my pick as kind of a centering tool. I'm just gonna kind of go around in a circle here inside this hole, inside the hole of the safety lever. Just kind of keep going around in circles and pushing with my finger at the same time. And you'll see that in, pop right up through the hole here okay and make sure that this thing pivots make sure it doesn't fall out sometimes people get that off to the side last minute they push that pin through and it's not capturing their safety lever okay so now this is pushed all the way in it's capturing my takedown safety lever bar here it's capturing my sear spring pivot pin or excuse me my sear pivot pin and I'm just going to make sure that it flops around freely. That is the rattle inside your 365 when people are like, is this normal? It's a safety lever flopping around. Next, what we're going to do is install the disc connector. The disc connector basically just slides into the channel on the side here. It only goes in one way. The fat piece sticking out. That right on the side just like this and slide it right up in there and then when we install our trigger bar spring the trigger bar will hold the disconnector 
in place. Next, we will install our trigger bar spring, our positive reset trigger spring. One leg of it goes through the hole in the frame here, and the other leg hooks on to the hole in our trigger bar here. Okay, so we're just going to slide this through just like this, and we'll make sure it gets hooked onto our frame on this end here. And then I'll use my thumb or the palm of my hand and hold my trigger forward, which brings my trigger bar backwards as I grab onto the other leg of my trigger bar spring with my pick. I'm going to bring it back and then release it so the leg goes through the hole on my trigger bar just like that. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit stiffer than the OEM spring, 10%. Um, that helps with the mushy reset. Just like that. And there you go. That is all completely reassembled. Just kind of double check everything, make sure everything's in its proper place. Everything's pushed in all the way. And then what we'll do is we'll grab our grip module, put the front in first. Slide the back down and just like that and reinstall our receiver pin. Next we will start working on the springs in the upper. Okay, next we'll disassemble the upper and change the two springs in here. So first we're going to remove our guide rod, remove our barrel. Now depending on how old your 365 is or how new it is, there's two different style um, striker housings. And this is important because the way we remove our end plate here depends on which style striker housing you have in your pistol. So I'm going to demonstrate both styles today. This is the most current one where this piece right here is our piece that we need to manipulate in order to unlock our back plate. Okay. So on this style here, we're going to basically push this piece right here towards the center and then pry it forward into this channel and that will remove our plate from the slide. All right, so this is the newer style like I was saying and I'm gonna use a small pocket screwdriver to move this piece into the center and then into the channel. The reason why this revision was done was because the back plates were coming loose uh, when the pistol was being fired. Um, so this made it more difficult for that back plate to come off. So. I don't really like this style. I use the old style still because it's much easier to remove. Um, and then these get all chewed up after a while. Uh, anyway, so I'll try to do this on camera. I'm going to basically put my screwdriver in on the side of this piece. And we're going to push it towards the center, just like that. Okay. When it's in the center, what we need to do is pry it down into the channel. And that'll allow my back plate to remove, release and slide up and out just like that. And then I've installed the older style. So if you have the older style, there is no bringing this to the side and in the channel. Basically, there's a space in between behind it. So this is the piece we're talking about right here. There's a spot in behind it that you can get a flat tip in there and just basically pull that forward and then release your back plate. So I'll put my screwdriver in there just like that. We'll compress it, and then push our back plate up and pull it right out. So as you can see, the older style is much easier to release your back plate, and it doesn't get all chewed up. But um, So we're gonna start sliding our striker out, and you're gonna feel some resistance on it. It's not gonna be able to slide all the way out because our striker safety is capturing it. It's kind of preventing the spring from going by. So this little piece right here, it is spring loaded. Okay, so we're going to use our finger to press that all the way in, remove our striker, and then slowly relieve the pressure from our striker safety. Okay, I'm going to roll it over on its side. And I'm going to pull it out just like that. So as you can see, there's a little spring here. And that's one of the ones in our kit that we're going to be replacing when we reassemble. So next we'll focus on our striker assembly itself. 
Okay, this is the housing, that little black piece we were pressing in on. Um, so if yours does get all chewed up, the newer style. Um, basically, these are replaced as an assembly. Um, but if you can somehow find just the black plastic piece, that's all you would need to replace. So our spring here is the one we're going to be replacing. It's basically captured by these two black wedges. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to compress our spring. That's going to release those plastic wedges and release our spring and allow us to pull it off. So I'm going to grab this by my hand, pull that spring off of those plastic wedges, just let those plastic wedges fall right out, and then slowly release our spring. Okay, so that's our striker spring that we're going to be replacing. This is our striker assembly, what's left. There is one more spring inside there. We're not really going to, we don't have to take this apart, but I'm going to do it just to show you. So when we remove our housing, that's all that is. Most people don't know there's a little spring right here. And it often gets lost when people are removing their striker to replace their striker for whatever reason. So we have this little spring here, okay? So just make sure that that doesn't get lost. Slide that back into the housing. And then you should always have a little bit of spring pressure there so you know it's working properly. All right, so we're going to grab our replacement Armory Craft striker spring. Now this is pretty tough sometimes, especially to do it by yourself to get this back together. What we're ultimately trying to achieve here is you can see halfway down my striker, there's this little notch, a little thinner portion of our striker. Okay, that portion there is where these cups need to go. Okay, and that's where they they get jammed in there. These little wedges, and it prevents them from coming out. And that's what keeps our spring in. Okay, so when we collapse our spring, we got to make sure that it's lower than this notch, so we can get those cups in there. These cups only go in one way. They can go on either side and all around the striker, but there's a top and a bottom. You can see there's a little ledge on the top because this little piece sits down inside your spring just like that okay so your spring captures the wedge and the wedge captures the spring when it's installed in the notch on your striker okay so Put my spring in here, make sure it's down on my housing properly right here. And then sometimes if you put your striker on the edge of a table, you know, something like this, as you're pushing the spring down, that'll keep it from going down inside your housing, making it a little easier uh, to get that back on there. So basically I'm going to Pull it down as far as I can, just like that with my hand. You see I got the notch here now. I'm going to put one cup here. I'll put the other cup underneath. Just like that. And release the spring. Make sure the cup is trapped inside the spring before you let go. Okay, because that thing will go launching across the room. Um, but that's how that works when reassembling. So now that we have our striker reassembled, we will put everything back together. We're going to grab our Armory Craft striker safety spring. It's a good idea to take the old springs and put them back in the bag that these came out of, so that way you don't get them confused. So we're going to take our Armory Craft. Striker safety spring. I'm going to put it on the striker safety just like that. We're going to slide the whole thing into the hole right here. Pay attention to your spring. Make sure it doesn't get knocked off. The striker safety. And I'm going to push that all the way in just like that until it's flush. Um, you can also take a flashlight and look down inside the hole and make sure there's no spring crooked in the hole um, that way because that 
it was crooked in the hole, it fell out of the striker safety housing there. Okay, just gonna hold that with my thumb. And I'm gonna slide my striker back in. And then once my striker's in, it'll capture the striker safety just like that. So remember, this is the old style housing. Very simple to put back together. We're gonna take our back plate and then we're gonna take our finger and push in on our housing. Remember, it's spring loaded because of our striker spring. So I'm gonna push that in as far as I can with my finger. I'm gonna get my back plate started in the channel, just like that. And then when I push this all the way up in there, you should hear it click into place. Just like that. Now I have the newer style housing. You can see mine's pretty mucked up from doing this so many times. Um, this one's a little bit more of a pain in the butt to get reassembled. So as you can see, when I push it in, it doesn't go in all the way. You've got to kind of pull it. See, this is what you're doing when you're pulling that to the side. You're just bending the side of the housing in. So you're going to kind of bend that in and get that going into the channel. Okay. Get it down in there as far as you can get it. Get our back plate started just like that. And then same thing, we'll push this up and it should click right into place. And then make sure, because mine's all mucked up, usually that'll go right back to the right by itself. Um, if it didn't, just kind of push it over with a flat tip, just like that. All right, now that we have that all reassembled, I'm a big fan of, you know, doing a functions check after reassembling stuff. So basically, for those of you that don't know, this safety right here prevents our striker from going far enough forward to where it comes out of the hole here and contacts your primer. Okay, so right now if we push that, you can see that striker safety is blocking it from going forward. You cannot see the pin coming out through the front hole there. But if we use something and depress the safety, now you can see it can go further forward. You can see our pin coming out through the hole. Okay, so make sure that works properly. Make sure when you let it go, it retracts it um, and make sure that it blocks it from going forward when that's not depressed. All that we have left is to reinstall our barrel, reinstall our guide rod, and then it's also a good idea when you have your striker removed to do a nice thorough cleaning of the striker cavity itself, okay? Um, over time, carbon gets in through there, um, through the hole in the front, uh, cleaning and lubricating, lubricant gets in there. That channel needs to be bone dry, no lube at all, okay? Um, so make sure in the very end you use like Q-tips or even some cleaning patches. Run them down into the channel and get that nice and squeaky clean before reassembling, okay? So we got our upper all reassembled. We're going to rotate our takedown lever. If it doesn't go down by itself, push up on your slide catch. Rotate that down. Make sure our safety lever is in the down forward position. Reinstall our slide. And then next we'll perform a functions check. Okay, functions check. Very simple. We're going to... Make sure that we are still safe and clear because we're pulling our trigger a couple times, okay? So make sure no round in the chamber, no magazine. Check our breech face, look away, do the same thing again. Chamber, magazine, breech face. We are working on a clear and safe firearm. Unloaded magazine, you're going to need a magazine. So uh, double check, make sure there's no round in there. So first we're going to install our magazine and pull down on it. Make sure it locks into place nice and firmly. And then we're going to release it with our mag release and make sure it falls under its own weight, which it does. We're going to slide our slide to the rear, and because the magazine's empty, the follower is pushing up on our slide catch. So we're going to make sure when we slide it back slowly, our mag catch gets pushed up, which it did. We can now remove our magazine. Um, and then we'll release our slide. Next, we're going to pull our tri trigger, put the muzzle in a safe direction. Um, pull our trigger, the trigger works. We're going to rack the slide while holding the trigger to the rear. Make sure our reset works. Pull the trigger again. Trigger works. So we'll rack our slide one more time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take it out of battery without covering the muzzle. And then we're going to pull our trigger and make sure it acts like a dead trick, which it does. So everything is fine with this pistol. It is ready to return to service. Okay, and that's how you install the Armory Craft 4-Piece Ultimate Master Spring Tuning Kit in your 365. 
Uh, just to go over one more thing really quick, you do not have to use every single spring in this kit um, in your 365. I know um, obviously a 365 for most people is an everyday carry um, and you don't really want a light, light uh, trigger. So experiment with it, put one spring in, use your trigger pull gauge, um, test the trigger, see what the how much it decreased the pull weight. Um, if you want it a little bit lighter, add another piece. Uh, if it's a recreational 365, I mean, put all four of them in there. It's really up to you. You do not have to use every single piece in this kit in order to make it function properly. The trigger bar, the positive reset spring, you can just install that one if you want a more tactile positive reset. Um, get rid of some of that mushiness um, from the 365 uh, reset. So um, there you have it. That's the kit. Um, it's available on SIGGuide.com as well as many other SIG upgrades for your 320s, classic series, 365s. Um, Toolkits are on there, pistol stands, all kinds of stuff. So um, there should be a subscribe button right down here in the corner as well. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel and you like this type of content and you find it useful, um, please smash that baby. I'd really appreciate it. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.